Hey, how's it going, guys? So yesterday I came across this job post, how to use Google Maps API to uh, find the location's information, give it a business name. So I thought this could be a pretty good opportunity uh, for us to use Google Maps API to practice some uh, real life scenario uh, exercise. Now let's take a look at the job description. So basically this person is looking for a developer who can write a, uh, write a script to export uh, the information to an Excel file. And the job detail is that basically this person wants a script or an automation program to basically allows him or her to uh, populate the business information, such as the business name, business address, giving a text query. So this is what the result looks like from the uh, sample file that the person provides. The input file looks like the uh, table on the list worksheet, and the output is going to look like uh, the output from the first worksheet. So let me rename uh, the worksheet to output. Now I'll be using Google Maps API uh, to write this Python script. And if I scroll down towards the bottom, I see the job still in progress. And to be honest, I don't know how much this person is going to pay for this uh, freelance work using these two uh, developers. But I see that he's paying one of the developers $25 per hour and the other developer is $7 per hour. If I'm taking this freelance job, I'll probably charge like $30 uh, set fee to write this Python program. Anyway, let's get started. I'll be using Google Maps uh, Place Search API to automate this task. And I'll post all the relevant links in the description below. Before we can use Google Maps API, we need to uh, have a set of API key. So make sure that under your Google project, you create an API key available for you to use. And also need to enable the uh, Google Maps API library. So if you go to navigation menu, APIs and services library, here I want to enable the Maps API. And it's going to be uh, Maps Place API. So this is going to be the first one, Places API. And make sure that you enable this API. And once you do that, we can start uh, creating the Python program. But before I do that, let's look at the uh, parameters to this places API. All right, so this uh, places API takes two parameters. The first parameter is the query. The second parameter is the API key. And then we have optional parameters. So we can provide uh, the region, location, radius, language, and minimum price, maximum price, whether or not the business is opening right now, and page token in case there are additional uh, items that we need to retrieve. And remember that uh, we can only extract 20 items per batch. We can also specify the business type. Now let's dive into the tutorial. So create a blank Python script. To install Google Maps Python library, you want to use the command pip install Google Maps. And I'll be using Win32 com to uh, export the data to an Excel spreadsheet, but you can also use other libraries such as pandas or Excel writers. All right, so I'll start by uh, import my API key first. So I'll name my uh, variable API key. And I'll just save my API key in a text file. So I'm going to open the file first. And I'll import the API key. Next, we need to create a Google Maps client instance. So from Google Maps dot client, we want to provide the API key. And I'll name the instances map client. Now if I run this code block, and it's saying that API key is not defined. Let me take a look. Oh, I forgot to uh, import the file here. Let me move the file over. Right, let me try again. So I'll run these two lines. And I have successfully created my Google Maps client instance. So if I use the third function to print all the members. So here are some of the methods and the API types that we can use. And to search for a place, I'm going to use the places API. Now here, I'm going to create a function code, get place info. Actually, I'll come back to this function later. So I'm going to show you the uh, manual step. So from map client dot places. 
inside the places method or places API, we want to provide the name of the business that we want to search for to the query parameter. So here I'm going to create a variable called location name. And let's go back to the Excel spreadsheet. So the person already provide what the output is going to look like. So in column A are the business name that I'm going to search for. Let me grab this business name. I think it's called uh, Lexus something, Arena or something. All right, so I'm going to copy paste the business to the location name. And I'll assign the location name variable to the query parameter. And I'll name the output as response. I'm getting the uh, the provided API key is invalid. Let me take a look. So I see that I have a single quotation at the end. Let me try again. So around this code block, right, this time I was able to make the API code successfully. Now if I print the response object, and it's going to return a dictionary. So we have uh, the HTML attribution key, results key. Results are basically the business information. And here we have the uh, status message. All right, so here let's do this. I'm going to grab the results from response.get results. And let me import the pp print function. I'm going to print the results. All right, so if we look at the results, the object type is a list. Inside the records, in this case, there's only one record. Let's go back to the uh, job detail. All right, so the person only wants the first item. So if there are multiple results for location, the script should use the address of the first entry. Now let's go back. So that actually makes this job pretty easy to, uh, to complete. So from this uh, record information, I'm going to import additional information since I don't want to limit my import information to just those two fields from the files that he or she provides. So let's figure out the information that I want to import. All right, so I want to import business status, the uh, business address, business name, the place ID, oh, the business rating, this one is a pretty good one, and the user ratings total. So just this information that I want to export. Now I'm going to convert uh, this code block into a function. So I'm going to assign a parameter to location name. I'm going to come out this line. All right, so here I'm going to insert try accept block. And this should be exception Z. If I'm running into an exception, I want to print the end message. I also want to return the value as none. And for this one, I'm going to simply return the results object. All right, so let me create a function. Let me come out uh, these lines. I'll come back to this later. Now I want to connect to my Excel spreadsheet. So from Win32 dispatch, I want to launch my Excel application. I want to make sure that the Excel application is visible. In here, I'm going to open the Excel uh, workbook. So I can type Excel app dot workbooks dot open. Let's see. Oh, so here I can use the OS dot get CWD uh, function to return the working directory path. I want to join the file path. Oops, should be OS dot path dot join. 
I want to join the working directory with the Excel file. So this will give me the full file path. Then I want to reference to the this uh, worksheet. Show me navigate to the list worksheet. I'll name the worksheet list object as WS list. It goes to workbook the worksheets. And it's going to be the worksheet name list. All right, so I'm going to run uh, these four lines. Let me see. Oh. Okay, CWD. All right, so let me run these two lines. Okay, so I've successfully uh, created my workbook object and my worksheet object. So I can verify that by printing the workbook name and the worksheet name. Oops, it should be worksheet list. All right, let's go back. So what I'm going to do now is I want to figure out last row number in the list worksheet. I can do that by referencing the list worksheet object that sells. Oops. And from list worksheet that rows that counts. This is going to return the total row counts that uh, this worksheet can contain. I want to figure out the last row based on count A. I can insert the count index 1 or I can insert the uh, column index letter. Let's use the letter. So it's going to be count A dot int. So in Excel VBA or Excel data model, they already have a set of constant values that you can reference to specify different enumerations. So to figure out the last row inside the end method, I want to type minus 4162 that row. And I'll name the output last row. Now if I run uh, line 24, if I print last row, it should give me 6. All right, so we have the uh, the last row number. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and loop each line one by one. So I'm going to say that for i in range from row number 2 to last row plus 1. Because in Excel, the row number starts from 1. Inside the loop, I'm going to call the get place info function. I'm going to grab the value from column A. Here I can type wslist.sales. I want to insert the row index and the uh, column index that value. And I'll name the output as place in four. And to write the data back to the uh, worksheet. So we can uh, insert the sales method. We'll insert the row index, the column index, that value. And it's going to be place in four. And I'll make several copies. So we have an extra open parenthesis. Okay, so let me grab these lines. I'll put that here. So in column B, we're going to insert the business name. In column C, we're going to insert the business address. All right, so it's going to be column C, D, place ID, rating, rating total. Once we finish all the actions, we need to assign the objects to none. Okay, so this everything we need to write for uh, this Python script or for this uh, Python program. I'm going to terminate this session. I'm going to press F5 to run script. Oh, so here I have a typo. Okay, so I see why. So I forgot to return just the first result. So inside the get place info function, from response.get results, I want to 
uh, grab the first item. Let me try again. All right, so here we're populating the business information. All right, so this is everything I want to share in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, see you guys watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.